Hey, uh, welcome to my talk. It's called, whoa, this is a cool screen. Uh, it's called uh, The Internet Appears, which is like a very vague title, so I can talk about anything I want. Uh, so let's see, how it's, let's see where this goes. I was originally planning on presenting on my laptop, but it's like one of these new, new ones that don't connect to anything, so. Uh, we had like a whole setup yesterday with like three dongles, but it was like too much, too many dongles. Uh, so Torsten borrowed me his laptop, which is great. Anyways, uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, so this talk is basically about how we can create peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks that actually work. And we'll uh, talk about that in a little bit. Um, look at the time so I can make sure. Cool. Yeah, I'm Matthias. Uh, I go by uh, Maffintosh on all the, uh, the GitHub and the Twitters. Uh, I live in Copenhagen, Denmark, which is like uh, 14 hours that way, I think. Uh, if you swing by, you can send me a message. I'll probably come hack somewhere. Um, I work on this cool project called the Dad Project, which is awesome. It's, it's about like uh, data versioning and peer-to-peer, -peer, and they basically uh, pay me to do open source full-time, which is uh, kind of nice. So thanks. Um, yeah, so um, connecting to stuff, right? Networks. So. Uh, we do Node, and probably everybody in here has probably at some point like written a Node server uh, and written a client. Uh, and actually, it's pretty easy to connect to servers, right? Uh, you usually have a, a setup that kind of looks like this, where you have a client and you have a server. There's no emoji for server, by the way. Somebody should get in on that. So I just took a printer, because that's like the, the next most boring device, I think. <laughs> Anyways, so like, you have a client and you have a server and you want to connect to it, and you usually, um, usually the server has like an IP. It might have a, like a host name also, but somewhere it has an IP, and it probably listens on some port, right? So if you want to uh, uh, contact it and have it, have it do things, it's pretty easy because you just uh, tell your client, hey, could you like uh, use TCP, um, which is like the thing that HTTP uses underneath, to uh, connect to this uh, IP in port, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, it usually works, and it works because uh, we have like a server, and it's like probably running on Amazon or like in some data center, and they have like uh, uh, people hired to make sure that it works, and it has an IP that doesn't change. And there's like probably some crazy setting somewhere that makes it actually um, accept traffic and stuff, right? It's just not, not something we, we think about that much. It just works. Um, so that's cool. <laughs> Uh, that's just this boring because uh, just this problem because like servers are, are super boring. Uh, why are they boring? Uh, well, they're like uh, single points of failure in everything we build. So it's kind of like when you're just hacking on your computer and then you're like, oh, I want to do something else, and I, you know, you go to Twitter and then people are complaining that Amazon is down, and then you're, then you know, yeah, single point of failure. Don't do that. Um, they also like they cost a lot of money. Uh, which is cool if you have money. It's not very cool if you don't have any money. Uh, it's also not cool donating all your money to like one big corporation. Uh, it's more cool to donate it to other things like open source, nonprofits. Um, oh yeah, and also like it requires this thing called ops. I don't know if anybody has ever done anything called ops, but it's just like uh, a fancy word for like running a bunch of shell scripts and like. Uh, <laughs> hiring a bunch of people that do all these shell scripts, and then once you hire a bunch of people to do them, you need to hire more people to do them because it's shell scripts, and then all of a sudden you have an ops department, and then you don't know what's going on anymore, uh, and then like, uh, yeah, just don't do it. So um, instead, this is a way easier thing to do, right? So instead of just get rid of the servers, throw that out, and uh, let's just have computers connect to computers. Um, because the cool thing is that if we can do that, we can do stuff like this also, where like computers connect to computers that also connect to computers, or uh, have computers that connect to computers that like, connect to computers and like form a grid. And like uh, in real life, it wouldn't look as pretty as this because half of them would, wouldn't work, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, and then everybody turns into an ops department. Like everybody is their own ops department, which is great. Scales pretty well. Um, cool. Yeah. So. This is basically what we call peer-to-peer, -peer, right? It's just a fancy word for saying uh, I have a computer and it connects to another computer. I would like to call it friend-to-friend -friend instead because I think that's way cooler than peer. I don't know what peer means. It's like some word somebody made up. 
um, but that's a whole different topic. Uh, so yeah, so, so there's a problem though, because it actually turns out that just connecting two computers is, is super hard. Uh, and it's super hard because of this thing. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, read my emoji language, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's a firewall. It turns out there's no, there's no freaking uh, emoji for wall. Somebody should get on that, especially with, with all this Trump thing going on. We need some wall emojis. Um, So I just took a shield instead. It's pretty good. Um, actually, fire shield is also kind of cool sounding. Anyways, um, yeah. So firewalls, right? So firewalls is this security thing that most people have running. They don't know if they have it running, but it's basically just a fancy thing that um, makes sure that um, you only um, you only allow other people to connect to you if you previously connected to them before. So that's a, just a fancy way of saying like if you go to a website, right? Uh, you connect to the website, and then you, by connecting to it, you're saying to the website, it's okay that you send me an HTML page back, right? But it's not okay that just all of nowhere that that web server just decides, like, here's some HTML if you haven't contacted it before. That's kind of creepy. Um, so it makes sense. It makes sense. Um, yeah, so basically, like, you know, I have this cool animation. <laughs> it hits the fire. Um, so, yeah, and, uh, you might not have a firewall on your computer, but you probably have a firewall in your router, the thing that actually connects you to the internet. And it becomes even more tricky now because most often that router has an IP that's different than your own IP. Um, and uh, you can kind of test this. So I'll try to use Torsten's terminal here, see if I get all messed up. Oh, shit. So if I run uh, IF config here, and zero, I get this cool IP out here, which is like my computer's IP, right? But if I curl this online service, curl IF config.io, it just returns me my public IP. It gives me another one. It looks kind of similar, but it's actually different. Um, oh, there's like a one in front, one seven. It's fine. It's different, right? So uh, it's tricky, because we don't really have IPs then. We can't really just say, this machine has an IP, and you can, you can call me on that IP. And even if, if we could, the firewall would be like, nope. Um, and stuff like this makes it really hard to do uh, TCP connections over peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, you can get around it, but then you need to be like a computer person, which is basically the same as an ops person. And then we're just back to the same problem as we were earlier. I just want to make things that just work for everybody, where you can just like you know open an application and it just works. Cool. So uh, there is a cool solution to this thing. It's called uh, UDP. Has anybody ever tried using UDP? Oh, cool. I see some cool people in here. That's awesome. Uh, UDP is like uh, this thing they teach you if you ever went to a computer science class. At some point, they'll mention, oh, there's this thing called UDP. You shouldn't use it. But it turns out it's super great. It's like way better than TCP because it's stateless, right? So what I mean by that is that when you make a TCP server a socket, you're only calling like one server, right? You're saying, hey, call this server, and I'm going to send data. Uh, UDP is way better, because you can send data to everybody at once, uh, because there's no sessions. And you can accept data from everybody at once, because there's no sessions. It basically just, it's just like a small wrapper where you can send a network message, which is just like any binary thing. And uh, when you receive one, There'll be like an IP and port, which is basically just, hey, the message came from this person. You can reply back if you want to. Um, so uh, and here's an like example of how that works in practice, right? So we have our uh, client, and they want to send a packet. There's an uh, emoji for packet. It's pretty cool. And they want to send it to a server, and the server has an IP and port like before, right? Um, so what happens is that the client will send this packet and it'll hit the firewall. And by hitting the firewall, since we're contacting somebody else, the firewall will now say, oh, cool, I'm sending a packet out uh, to this server on this IP port. So if at some point I get a message back, I'll allow it if it's coming from the same uh, server with the IP and port. That's like the security model. So the packet will then arrive at the server, and the server will just like do stuff and reply back. Uh, and when the message comes back to the firewall, 
the firewall will look at it, and since the IP and port is coming from the same server, it'll be like, cool, I'll, I'll let it in. And this is actually what happens every time you do a DNS lookup on your computer if you've ever done that, because it uses the stack. Uh, so why is that cool? Well, we can use this with a massive hack to allow peer-to-peer uh, -peer connections between most computers uh, using something called, can anybody guess what this is? Hole punching, yeah, yeah. So it's like, it's hole punching. It's a guy punching a hole. Because it's, uh, it's basically a technique where you, you, you apply a bunch of hacks to punch a hole in somebody's firewall and be like, here, take it. Um, it's kind of cool because if you, if, you, if you Google hole punching, uh, half of the uh, results would be like technical network and the other half would be people punching holes in paper because apparently <laughs> that's, that's the whole thing. And they have like all these overlapping words and it's very confusing. And there's even something called, so I work for that, and we do a lot of hole punching, but there's a paper company called that that punches holes in paper. <laughs> and they have like a bunch of YouTube videos, and it's so confusing, uh, but also pretty cool. So uh, let me try to explain how this uh, hole punching stuff works. Uh, we'll get to some cool demos also later. But anyways, so let's say we have uh, Alice and Bob right, and uh, they're both behind a firewall. Uh, because they just have normal laptops, but they want to connect to each other. So uh, how can we make a peer-to-peer -peer connection between them? So um, we have this assumption. They both know somewhere there's a server that uh, is doing a job, and they both know, know the address of the server, and they can both uh, reach it. Reach it. <coughs> so what we can do is we can have Alice send a packet to the server saying, hey, I want to talk to Bob, right? So cool thing is that when Alice sends this packet, it'll hit her firewall, and the firewall will, see, will look at it and be like, oh, you're sending a packet to the server. That's cool. I'll now allow you to, the server to send packets back, because that's the contract. Right. Uh, but we do this cool trick where the server is configured to also remember that a Alice uh, is uh, using this IP port that she's using locally. Um, so by doing this simple trick, we can now establish a connection where Alice and the server can kind of talk to each other, right? They can now send messages, and the firewall would be like, cool, cool. With it. It's just a very classic example. It's very similar to the first one we did. Uh, but if Bob does the same thing, so Bob will be like, cool, I'll send a packet to the server, and I'm going to tell the server, hey, I would like to talk to Alice. Same thing happens. The packet will hit Bob's firewall, which means that the server can now send messages back. Um, but at the same time, <clears throat> or like after this happens, when the server receives uh, Bob's message that he wants to talk to Alice, the serv server will message Bob back with Alice's IP and port, because it, it got that earlier, right? Uh, so Bob receives, receives this and is like, oh, cool, I know Alice now has this IP and port because the server told me. I'll try to send her a message. Uh, so by doing this, this message hits Bob's uh, firewall, and now Bob's firewall will allow messages back from Alice, right? Because it's going through his firewall. He's contacting Alice. So here's the problem. When this message hits Alice's firewall, uh, it will reject it because Alice don't know who Bob is. She never contacted him. He, she doesn't know the IP and port. So it will just be dropped, and it didn't work, right? That's kind of sad. Um, but it opened up this uh, hole where now, because Bob has sent a message to Alice, he can now receive messages back from her, right? Because we kind of told the firewall that by sending that message. So that's pretty cool, because if that happened, and at the same time, the server sends a message to Alice with uh, Bob's IP import, right? Because it knows both now. Al uh, Alice can just do the same thing. So Alice will send a packet to Bob, Again, by doing that, it'll hit uh, her firewall. And by hitting the firewall, the firewall will now allow messages back from Bob, right? Which means that Bob and Alice can now actually talk to each other, because they both punched a hole in their firewall, saying, oh, Bob, I want to talk to Alice. And Alice said, I want to talk to Bob. Which means that any next messages they send will actually go through directly to each other without having to talk to that inter uh, server in the middle. Uh, and the cool thing about this is that it actually, this actually works on most networks. Uh, it's a hack, 
so that there's like still routers out there that are just crazy and like you know ops departments setting up crazy shit. Um, so it doesn't work on anything, on everything. Uh, so I wrote this tool called Peer to Peer Test to just to test if this thing works, and you can install it from npm. Uh, and it's a very simple command line tool where if you run it, you can just give a description of your network. And it will tell you back if your network is, 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 is friendly for accepting peer-to-peer -peer connections using this uh, hole punching technique. So I can just demo that real quick. Oh, I don't think I installed it on Torsten's computer. I'll just download it. He'll be fine with it. <laughs> See if that actually works. Uh, downloading 200. Oh, cool. It has no dependencies. That's awesome. So node con. So it gives me back this reply in JSON because uh, we're like technical people saying that uh, this network is host hole punchable because it has certain criteria that makes this technique I talked about work. So that's cool. So uh, I tried to tweet about it and get other people to run it. And uh, after doing that, I made this cool map. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but all the thumbs ups are where it actually worked. And all the pile of poops are where it didn't work. Um, and you can see I have most friends in Europe and the States, and then I have a couple in uh, Australia and Argentina, yay. Uh, uh, I'm missing some Russian friends. If anybody wants to be friends with me from Russia, that would be cool. Um, and also, people started sending me these cool pictures uh, of them running it. So this is a guy in Australia that went down to the desert, I guess, and took a picture of a kangaroo sign and actually ran the program. And I, I don't know if you can see it here, but it actually says that his... Uh, uh, mobile network in Australia can be connected to using peer-to-peer -peer technology, so that's that's pretty cool. Uh, my friend in, in uh, Africa went on a safari and uh, and ran it, and uh, I hope he survived the cheetah. But uh, <laughs> it's actually uh, whole punchable his network, so we can send him a message saying like, "Watch out, there's a, there's a cheetah." Um, and like. Uh, Stats showed that if you just look at all the data I collected, it's around 90% of all networks that work like this. So that's pretty good, which means that like 90% of all cases, we can just get rid of servers. And there's a very, very easy way where we can just have a, um, a fallback server. So if you're trying to connect to somebody and it doesn't work, you can just fall back to a server and route the traffic through it. But you only have to do that for 10% of the uh, cases, which is like uh, you save 90% of your money. That's cool. Uh, cool. So. I wrote a bunch of node modules that allows you to do this uh, without thinking about all the things I just talked about. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, and I'm going to try to uh, demo them because I have 10 minutes left. So that's cool. Yeah, demo. Oh, yeah, it's called Peer Network. It's one of them. It's like a lower level one. And then there's one called Discovery Swarm. And it's basically just called Discovery Swarm because I have a lower level one that's called Discovery Channel because that was too good of a name to not take. Um, so I had to call it something with Discovery. Anyways, uh, yeah, so to demo this, I'm going to try to use, make a peer-to-peer -peer network between my computer and Torsten's computer, because Torsten uses some crazy Tmux thing that I don't know how to use. Uh, so hopefully, the peer-to-peer -peer technology will work. So I'm going to do a screen recording. One second. Go to Twitter. Tweet it out, and then. Go to do some soft promotion here. Have a this is a, actually a link to a peer-to-peer -peer network that I wrote a couple of days ago that allows you to do live streaming over peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, it's this cool app. Yeah, so that's my computer now. I'll try to make it uh, bigger. Cool. Yeah, so if I, like, if, I, if I do stuff here now, it'll show up in like five seconds. Hopefully, let's see. One, yeah, there we go. I'm doing stuff. Um, oh, yeah, so actually, uh, I'll show this real quick. So if you, um, you can actually go to, Hypervision. It's called Hypervision. It's pretty cool. It's like a television, but it's hyper. Um, <laughs> So actually, if you, if you went here now and uh, you ran, you, you build it, it's like an Electron app. 
you could also uh, watch this live feed using my st uh, stream. And it's all peer-to-peer, -peer, so it means that everybody who's watching it is also helping hosting it. So like, it'll never go down, basically, which is pretty cool. Um, you can also record it for later and stuff like that. Anyways, shameless self-promotion. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. Um, oh yeah, and it has this cool side effect where, this is pretty awesome, actually. If I start watching the stream in the stream that I'm recording, funny things happen. So I'm, here I'm just starting the app locally. So this is, I'm pasting in the link. The UI is pretty cool. Uh, so this is like a recording of me watching the same recording and I'm like in a second it'll start recording itself inside itself. Uh, I can just watch this for like hours. <laughs> I'm just gonna make this demo from now on forever. Uh, anyways, oh yeah, it gets pretty spacey. Um, I'll just stop that real quick. Anyways. Um, okay. It's actually pretty cool. It's a little bit delayed. It makes me, it gives me time to think a little bit more. Um, oh yeah, I have emojis in my terminal also. Uh, oh, I need to move it a little bit to the side. So, yeah, so this is a cool program, program that's using that discovery swarm module to do peer-to-peer uh, -peer connections. So basically what it does is that it just cr creates a swarm. A swarm is just a fancy word we call a bunch of peer-to-peer -peer connections. And if you look at the bottom here, uh, instead of giving it like a port and a host name, you just give it a name, it can be anything. And if you run this program on multiple computers, the connection event will fire on, on uh, each of them when another peer appears. And I just do a simple chat app here where I just pipe standard in into the socket and pipe it out. And this is using all the hole punching magic behind the scenes, and it's using actually using the BitTorrent DHT to kind of configure itself, so it's very decentralized and cool. Uh, so if I run this, make this a little bit bigger also. If I run this on my computer, I'll have in like a couple of seconds. So I'm running the program, it's the same program here on my computer. Uh, and then I'm gonna SSH into some other machine. And I'm just gonna run the same program on this other machine. Um, they'll just magically find each other because it's, uh, oh, oh, we're five seconds behind, it's fine. I'll wait five seconds. I'll run this down here also. So uh, now I'm running a program on two machines uh, that don't know about each other, and it only has that name, but they find each other. And uh, then I can just type something in here. Hello. And, uh, oh, still a little bit behind. So I ran it on two machines here, and then I started talking, and now I'm running it down here also in a second. So I'm running it two times on my own computer. Then when I type something, it shows up on all of them because they're just uh, joining the same swarm. Oh, cool, now it's getting random data here. That's awesome. Uh, probably because something I accidentally did. Oh, it's probably some, uh, it's because I resized it and it's sending some events. Uh, and when I type something over here in, in, uh, in the server one, it'll just pipe it back to all of them, which I do in like one second. So it's just a very simple way of creating networks where you don't have to worry about ports or like host names, uh, and you can just run the you know the swarm on, on as many computers as you want to, and everything just kind of works, which is kind of nice. So uh, stop using servers and just do this instead. It's cool. All right. Oh, now I need to go back to this computer. Watch it close down. Yeah, I'm also almost out of time, so that's cool. Oh, it's kind of freaky to watch two computers at once. Uh, yeah, demo, I did that. Awesome. And that was it. Thank you.
Oh yeah, I just want to say all of this is like running today in like big systems already in like universities, so it's pretty tested and cool, and it's uh, the same kind of technique that's powering BitTorrent, so it's like pretty scalable. Cool. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, oh, nice.